Almost not a week goes by where I don't get asked one of three questions. One, why I don't write more SaaS. Two, how to write CSS that actually works for older browsers. And three, when you can finally start using some modern CSS. And the answer to all three of those questions is post CSS. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. In this short video, I want to walk you through PostCSS, what it is, how it works, why you might want to use it, and different plugins that I use. At the very end, I'll walk you through how to actually set it up in a real life project, but you'll have to stick around all the way to the end for that if you're interested in that. So let's start with what PostCSS is. Well, it's a tool for transforming CSS with JavaScript. In other words, you write CSS, and then you can basically add different functionalities or superpowers onto that CSS with this JavaScript plugin architecture. So the way it works is you can actually add things with plugins, like you can add these prefixers, so you don't have to remember to write all those. You just write this, and it takes care of all that for you. Or you could do things like writing using future CSS, like this these new future CSS color functions. You write this, and it will convert it down into CSS that browsers can understand right now today. It can also do cool new things, like you can add modules or use modules directly in CSS files, or use imports that are more performant. Or you can do things like lint, so you can actually say, hey, here's how I want it to style my CSS, and PostCSS can do that for you. Now, all this is possible through the plugin architecture, and that's really the main focus of this video is how it actually works. So the way it works is you basically do two things. Number one, you look at whatever your build tool happens to be. So if I jump all the way down here, you can see most build tools have some kind of PostCSS extension capability. And the reason that that's the case is because it's been around since 2015. So for instance, if you're using something like Parcel, or you use something like Vite, or you use Gulp, or, or Grunt, or any of these things, almost all of them include possibilities of including PostCSS immediately. And some of them actually are built with them embedded in it, like Vite and Parcel. So you may already be using PostCSS and just not realize it. In fact, that's probably the case. Now, why might you want to use it? Well, hopefully you've already picked up on that some now, but let me give you a few really specific reasons. One, you can write backwards facing CSS and not be afraid that it won't work on other browsers. Post CSS will take care of that for you. Two, you can write future CSS right now. Three, it's modular, so you can include things you like. You're not tied into an entire way of writing CSS like SAS. You can just grab a mixin plugin, for instance, and then you can write mixins, or a nesting plugin, and then you can write nestins. So you can kind of create the CSS you like to write with the, these post CSS plugins. Fourth, and this goes along with it, it's adaptive. So there's more than 200, I think, plugins right now that are operational and working and modern. And I, there's always new ones being added all the time. In fact, I did a video recently on Adam Argyle's Open Props. This is his kind of CSS framework. And he wrote a plugin in PostCSS so that you can just use the props you want and the rest of them don't show up. Finally here, it's built for many build tools like I've already mentioned. It's already included in things like Vite and Parcel. And you're already using it if you're using any of those. So you may actually not have that much setup to do. So, so far we've just mentioned what it is and kind of why you might want to use it. I've mentioned that it's all based on these plugins. So that's what I want to spend the next kind of major section of this video talking about is which plugins I like and why. So I'm going to walk through them fairly quickly. But first, just in case you're not convinced that you should be using PostCSS, you might know of things like SAS and you might think, well, that's really popular. I'm not sure I want to use something like PostCSS. Well, let's look at the numbers. All right. Here's SAS. It has seven and a half million downloads. Here's less. That's another popular way of writing CSS that has three and a half million downloads. And finally, let's look at PostCSS. Put your guesses in right now what you think it might be. 54 million people use this each week. Now, a lot of that is because it's included by default in a lot of build tools. So like I said, you might already be using it. So let's take through some of those plugins and I'm gonna go fairly quickly here. And then at the very end, I'll show you how to actually get this up and running. So first of all, you've got something called post CSS import. Now you can actually use import statements in CSS natively, but they actually block the loading of different files afterwards. And then each one of them is loaded separately. So if you have 10 imports, you're actually having the client load 10 separate CSS files. So it's not actually very performant and I would not use uh, import statements in CSS unless I was using this plugin for post CSS. What it does is it compiles all of those imports into a single file in the very end, and then it doesn't block anything, obviously, because it's just one file that they're downloading. So way more performant and really the way the, the spec should be written as well. 
Secondly, this auto prefixer is one that you probably used before. I've mentioned it already. It adds these little extensions on the front when you need to have them. Nobody's writing all of this. They're just writing this and using something like uh, auto prefixer to then add all these things on top of it. So you should be writing that way as well. And that makes sure that vendor prefixes for older browsers or other browsers that need those things are, are added automatically to your CSS. This next one, CSS Nano, it minifies things. So it'll get rid of all these comments, all the spaces, and all of that becomes this single line right here. So really compressed. And in fact, I think this is what Parcel uses, and I think V uses it as well by default when you build from either of those build tools. All right, the next one is these mixins, and I've already mentioned these. They work a lot like SAS, except that you can just write them in your normal CSS files as long as you're using this PostCSS plugin. All right, next uh, we've got PostCSS nested and PostCSS nesting. Now that's confusing, and it is. All right, but the difference is that SAS, which is how a lot of people prefer to write nested statements here, might be and probably is the way you're used to writing it if you like nesting. And if you want that same style, but in a CSS file, you should use this plugin. It also works really well for like BEM writing uh, variables as well, or, or classes as well. So that's another reason to use this nested. However, CSS itself is actually natively getting nesting. So if you want to use that now for the future, what we'll be writing just in normal CSS, you can see here it just requires a lot more ampersands than you might otherwise write. But once you do it, it's not a big deal. You just add a couple extra, extra characters, and then it's a little bit more explicit about exactly what you're nesting and how those things relate to the things that came before in that nested tree. So post CSS nesting is the one for the future CSS spec that you can go ahead and use it right now. All right, next, you've got this media min max. If you've ever written like media query min width 500 pixels and you have to like do mental math in your mind, like does that mean like smaller than or larger than? Well, this basically lets you write it in a more human readable syntax. So you could write something like this. Width is greater than or equal to 500 pixels. That's pretty clear. It has to be above 500 pixels or equal to it. And it's less than or equal to 1200 pixels. So within that range, then do this. Now what that will produce after it's run through Pill CSS is all this. So it actually puts it the way you should have written it if you wrote it in just CSS that works right now today, but you don't have to remember all that. And eventually this syntax is coming to CSS. So that's the media min max. Finally here, the custom media query. These are really helpful. You can see how you can just write this custom media and then you give it a CSS variable looking name and whatever the value happens to be. And then you can use that all throughout your document. So wherever you're writing this, you could just have something like small and then you just put media small, right? Like that. And if you ever wanna update that value, you update it in one place and it's updated all throughout your document. There's a bunch more you can do with this, but that's at least a starting point and you can already see the value of it there. I mentioned that you can have multiple individual plugins. You can also, however, have groups of plugins called presets. And the one that really everybody uses is something called post CSS preset ENV. And it's kind of blessed by post CSS and that they've really only include things that they really feel like are up to snuff and work well. But what it does is it includes something like 30 small plugins that all together mean you can write modern CSS right now and just use the normal syntax you're supposed to be writing and let post CSS worry about making sure that it's adapted to every browser that you say you want it to be adapted to. So I'll show you how to get this up and running here in just a second. But let's first of all, let me see if I can find the list. If I come right up top here, this features I think is where it's at. All of these are listed, and some of these are ones we've already looked at, like this custom media queries. So it's included directly in this, but all of these are included in the one plugin group, essentially, called PostCSS Preset ENV. You can see, uh, let's see, I think that there was another one I showed you a second ago that is also in here. I'm not seeing it right now, but like gap properties. Now, these are supported in most modern browsers, but it's not in previous browsers. Well, you don't have to worry about that as long as you have this plugin installed. All right, so this is a great one to start with. So let's go ahead now that we've kind of surveyed the landscape of really popular ones, and there's a bunch more you could look at. Let me show you how to actually get it up and running. So if I come back over this way, you can see that what I said is you have to have, first of all, make sure that you can install post CSS with whatever your build tool is. There are a bunch of descriptions down here for like parcel and webpack, Gulp, uh, Grunt, if you want to use NPM or the CLI, they walk you through all of that. They give you a bunch of other ones here. So those are individual walkthroughs of how to set that up. I'm going to use something called Vite because it's not included here. And it is a really popular one now, just even in the last year or so. Uh, so I'll show you how to get it up and running with Vite. 
Then you just install whatever plugins you want. And here are a bunch of ones that they list out here. Uh, you can see a lot of these I've already mentioned to you. This post-set post CSS preset ENV is the one I just showed you. That's like that group of plugins. This one is for container query support. So you can see it's just really cool. You can use whatever you want as long as post CSS is watching stuff for you. All right, so here's what I've got over here. I've got this Vite project up and running. We need to do a few things. So let's first of all, open up the terminal here and let me give myself a little bit more space. And then I'm gonna just add all of this here to the local terminal and then I'll walk you through it while it's installing. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. What we're gonna do is install as a dev dependency PostCSS, that's the actual API that works with all these plugins, and then a bunch of random plugins. So this PostCSS import, auto prefixer, uh, PostCSS mixins, that media min max, the thing that gives you that more readable media query, the custom media, and then this PostCSS preset ENV. Now that's the one that includes a bunch of these by default, but I've also added additional ones over here. So once you've got all those up and running, this Vite automatically when you install it here includes dev Vite script by default. But whatever build tool you're using, you're just gonna run your dev script. So npm run dev here, and a lot of the other build tools have that exact same one. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. You'll notice that it's kind of ugly right now. That's all right. That's what it's supposed to look like. Uh, I've got the CSS style sheet right here, and I've written a bunch of cool stuff in here. Now, one thing I wanna do before we do too much else is show you an extension in VS Code that will be really helpful for you when you're writing this kind of future CSS. So I'm gonna jump over this way, and let me see. And it's this post CSS language support right here, and I've disabled it. Let me go ahead and enable it for my workspace, and suddenly this is way more readable. So what it allows you to do is to write future CSS and actually see it styled correctly, and that's what I've got here. All right, so now that I've done that, and I've gone ahead and installed that extension, I've got my dev server up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file here. We're gonna call this postcss.config.js. Now there are other ways to style this if you have like, uh, in your package.json here. If you have your module set to true, then you might have to make this a .cjs for common. And so that, it will usually tell you that in the terminal when you try to run it. So just to note that that might be something you need to do. All right, so I just need to add one thing here and that is module.exports. And then I'm just gonna add in here plugins like this, just like that. Now, all I have to do then is add different plugins that I want to use. So let's kind of start with these one at a time, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill this dev server uh, just so we can kind of start fresh here. And then let me look at my package.json. Let's look at this uh, auto prefixer to start with. Now, some of these require something a little bit extra, and this one is one of those. So with this auto prefixer, you actually need to tell it exactly how many browsers you want it to go back and look at. There's a couple places you can do that, but usually what people do is come into this package.json and they add it directly in here. So you'd write in here browsers list, and then you can give it an array here of items. So I'm just gonna say defaults. That's usually what I stick to and then I'll save it. And now that that's set up and we've got this post CSS set up, I should be able to come in here and say npm run dev and get this back up and running. And then if I use something, so if I come back over here, let's see something, if I got anything here, I, I think user select of like none, something like that, that should require some prefixes. So if I come over here, you can see now it's added all of these for me automatically. Now if I get rid of this right here, let me go ahead and do that, and resave and refresh here. I might need to restart the dev server. Now you can see that those are no longer there. So this auto prefixer is adding all of those for us and that's all we had to do. So I'm gonna close that back down again and let's walk through that one more time. So what I did was I installed PostCSS and then I installed a plugin, in this case, just this auto prefixer. So these two right here are all we're looking at for now. Then I created this PostCSS config file. I added it like this and that's it. Now my PostCSS looked at the plugin list I had listed. It added that directly in here and we're set to go. Now, before I show you that preset ENV, the one that includes a bunch of smaller plugins, let me go ahead and show you the other ones we've installed. So let's come back to this package.json and we've got these other ones. So this PostCSS custom media, this media import, media min max, and mixins. So we're gonna look at all these. So let me go ahead and copy these right now. I'll just grab it like this for now and I'll jump back over this way. So what I'm gonna do is the exact same thing and there are different things that you can add on top of this if you want to, but let me come in here, right here, and for the most part, you're just gonna add it just like that with some commas, and that should be set and ready to go. Now, 
Inside of all these, usually there are ways that you can customize that if you want to, and we could do that here. For some of these, we might need to. Let me go ahead and show you a couple of things though quickly. So if I jump over here, let's see this uh, import, I think is the first one I showed you right here. Now, one thing to mention here is Vite actually includes this by default, so I don't even need this. It's actually already working. You may have noticed that this is already blue, and that's because uh, Vite uses this by default. So it's already installed and, and operational. That also means technically with the Vite, I don't even think you need to install Post CSS. It's already there, um, but I went ahead and did it just to show you how to use it no matter what uh, build tool you're using. So let's look at some of these other ones. You can see here this mixin. Sometimes there'll be certain instructions they give you that you have to follow. So like this one, note that you set this plugin before either this one or this one. Now I'm not using either of those right here, but if I were to use this post CSS nested, then I would need to do that. I'm not currently, and I will use that once we get to the post CSS preset EMV. Uh, if I come back over here, let's see medium min max. I think that's this one right here. I don't think there are any special things it gives me. Yeah, I think we can use it just like that. So those all should be set and ready to go. Now in each of those, again, if you wanna read the documentation and figure out how to customize those, you can do that. But for now, I'm just gonna run my dev server once again and get Vite up and running and you should see it adapt a little bit differently. So a couple things are happening here. If I jump back over here to my CSS, you can see this import statement is working now. Again, it kinda of already was because Vite was cheating a little bit and giving us a head start. But the other things that are happening here is I'm getting this custom media query now applying. This custom selector is also applying here with this heading one, two, three, four, five, six. All of these things are now applied whenever I use this heading right here, which I'm using uh, down this way right here. I also get this color function, which isn't quite working yet because we're not using the preset ENV that includes that color plugin by default, but several of these other things are working. So this margin block zero, when I get small enough, that should go away. When I get a little bit bigger, it should pop back up. I don't know if you can see that because it's really minimal. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's working. No, it's not because of this nested. We haven't used nested yet. But, uh, and same thing here, this one is also not working. The ones that are working though, are like this mixin that we're using right here. So you can see I'm using it on this nav item and that's exactly what it's doing. Getting rid of the margin, the padding and setting the list style to none. The other one we've got is obviously the auto prefixer. We've also got custom media queries working, our import working um, and the min max. Let's see, I don't think I have one working for that one yet because I'm not using it anywhere. So maybe we should, yeah, I am right here. All right, so this is working with this custom media query. So those are working together. All right, finally, as promised, let's look at that preset ENV. That one's really cool to use. So I'm gonna come in here and said, say post CSS preset uh, ENV. And this one, just like before, you can add additional things to it. One of the options you can pass is stage and you need to set this to something like one or uh, zero or two. This basically says what spec the CSS should try to get to. So zero is like super experimental features. One is a little bit more like, hey, this is probably gonna happen. Two is definitely headed that way. Three is pretty stable and four is basically used by all modern browsers. So two is the default. So I usually do like zero or one if I wanna do something a little bit more fancy. And again, you can check out documentation for that. So let's set this to zero uh, like that. So that should work. All right, let me go ahead and kill this and I'm gonna restart it. And now you should see all those nesting things working properly. Uh, and there you go. I even get some cool P3 color stuff going on here. So let's come down here, let's walk through all this. So you can see what I've got is this, um, P display P3 color, so this new kind of color syntax for a different kind of color space is now being used for this heading. This custom, uh, what do we call that? Custom selector is also working down this way. You can see I've got this hover, even though my CSS is kind of yelling at me here, my linter is yelling at me. Now when I hover, I get it to turn to that purple color, all because of this right here. I hope if you've asked those questions before, hey, why don't you write more SAS? Or hey, what if I wanna make sure my stuff is backwards compatible? Or what if I wanna write the future stuff now? Well, all the answers to those questions are found in Post CSS. And I hope this small tutorial has helped you kind of wrap your mind around it and maybe you can start using it in your next project. Hey, well, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.